Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Junt midrange deck that we'll be playing in best of three. So we've got a signboard here as well. And the idea behind the deck is that we're playing some of the same sacrifice synergies that you might see in a Rakdos Aristocrat deck with Mayhem Devil and Chandra, but we're also taking more advantage of Chandra's minus two ability to get back instants and sorceries from the graveyard, as we have some very powerful options in the sideboard that Chandra can get back as well. And then we've got some more synergy in green with the addition of a Woodland Champion that says whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under our control, we can put that many plus one plus one counters on Woodland Champion, which means we can have a curve of turn 2 Woodland Champion, turn 3 Chandra Acolyte of Flame, make 2 one, 1 Elementals, and those will grow the Woodland Champion up to a 4-4, and it's only going to get bigger from there. So that's a nice curve you can have in this type of deck. And then we also have Vraska Golgari Queen, which also synergizes greatly with Chandra, since we can easily sacrifice an Elemental token from Chandra to Vraska's plus 2 ability to gain a life and draw card, and the minus 3 on Vraska is great in a format full of 3 mana Planeswalkers, and then all those sacrifice synergies were great with Mayhem Devil, letting us deal 1 damage to any target whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, also great against the Scapeshift deck, as the opponent will take a ton of damage if they sacrifice lands to Scapeshift with a Mayhem Devil in play. So there's a ton of things going on in the deck, and something else to point out is that most of the deck will stay after rotation. We lose out on a Banefire, the two Parent Spillages, and an Angrath in the main deck, and then a few of the dual lands, but the core of the deck will stay after rotation, and there's even a revealed card from Eldrain, the 5 mana legendary dragon in the Junt Colors, Core Vault, that we can already play with in the Brawl event, that would fit perfectly into this deck as it has great synergy with sacrifice effects, so that's definitely a card I'm looking forward to adding to the deck. So let's take a look at our entire list here, starting out with our 1 drops, where we have a full play set of shock, 1 mana to deal 2 damage to any target, just a nice cheap removal spell that we can also get back with Chandra. Then we also have a 1 of copy of Banefire, which we can also get back with Chandra. Despite the X potentially being very large, the convert mana cost is still equal to 1 when it's in the graveyard. And since we're also playing 2 copies of Nissa, which can generate a ton of extra mana, we can sink all that mana into a big Banefire to help us close out the game. Then at 2 mana we've got a full play set of Paradise Druid to help us ramp and fix our mana. 4 copies of Woodland Champion to mostly go with our Chandra. Also gets bigger if we play Pirate Spillage, since it also grows when we make treasure tokens. And also works great with Liliana when we make a zombie token. The Woodland Champion will grow as well. Then we have two copies of Legion Send, as well as additional copies in the sideboard to help us deal with the Zombie Horde out of the Scapeshift deck, can deal with Hydroid Crisis. Adanto Vanguard can also be problematic for the red removal spells, so Legion Send is a great removal spell at the moment. And then we also have two copies of Angra's Rampage as a pretty flexible removal spell that can deal with artifacts, creatures, or planeswalkers, and can also circumvent the protection spells out of the Feather deck, so God's Willing is not gonna stop us from dealing with a Feather, for example, but it's pretty poor against Tamyo decks, since Tamyo prevents us from making the opponent sacrifice a permanent. Then at 3 mana we've got the full playset of Mayhem Devil, which is great, just a nice threat that synergizes with a lot of our different cards. And then the full playset of Chandra to get back our powerful instants and sorceries, especially after sideboard, Chandra gets even better. And then the elemental tokens still work great with Woodland Champion, Vraska, and of course Mayhem Devil. If we sacrifice those two elemental tokens, they also deal two damage with a Mayhem Devil. Then at 4 mana we've got two copies of Pirate Spillage, which was a late addition to the deck. And it does a few different things for our deck, it helps us smooth out our draw, so we can get rid of extra lands or dead cards in certain matchups, especially in game 1, and then draw two cards. We also get to make two treasure tokens, those treasure tokens synergize greatly with Woodland Champion, putting two plus one plus one counters on it. And the treasure tokens also work great with Mayhem Devil, because when we sacrifice those treasure tokens for mana, we also sacrifice them, which means we get to deal one damage with the Mayhem Devil for each treasure token we sacrifice. And then it also potentially helps us ramp into a more expensive planeswalkers like Liliana. So it's a pretty flexible card, but it can be poor against opposing Narsets, so we can easily take it out after sideboard. And then we have the full playset of Vraska, Golgari Queen, which we can use as removal. A lot of three mana cost creatures in the format, especially the Cathas combo deck, has a ton of different targets for Vraska to kill. 
and can also take out Teferis, Narsets, and then the plus two ability is great, letting us draw extra cards, especially alongside Chandra. If we ever get to live the dream of Angrath to steal the opponent's creature and then sacrifice it to Vraska, that also feels pretty good. And then the ultimate ability, making an emblem, is actually also quite good in our deck, because it says whenever a creature we control deals combat damage to a player, that player loses a game, and we also have four copies of Chandra Acolyte of Flame in our deck, so even if we don't have any creatures in play at all, we could always top deck a Chandra, make two hasty elemental tokens, and if the opponent doesn't have enough blockers out, they just lose the game to the emblem, so that's also a great pairing. And then at 5 mana we've got two copies of Nissa who shakes the world, which is just a great planeswalker, making extra mana for each forest we have, and turning lands into 3-3 creatures to apply pressure. And then we have a 1 of copy of Angrath, which can make the opponent discard with the plus 1 ability. The minus 3 can gain control of an opposing creature until end of turn, and if that creature has convert mana cost 3 or less it also gets sacrificed, so it shines against opposing copies of Adanto Vanguard and Hydroid Crisis. And then last but not least, two copies of Liliana, Dreadhorde General, which is also amazing in this deck, since her passive ability says whenever a creature we control dies, draw a card, so that also works great with Chandra Acolyte of Flame, because those two elemental tokens get sacrificed at the end of turn, which also means we get to draw two cards with Liliana. The plus one ability makes a 2-2 zombie token, which is also nice alongside Woodland Champion, and her minus four makes each player sacrifice two creatures, which is also great if we have a Chandra in place since we can just make two elemental tokens and sacrifice those two Liliana. And if we ever have a Mayhem Devil in play when we minus four Liliana, that's also a lot of permanence getting sacrificed for Mayhem Devil to deal damage. And then the minus nine ultimate can also be game winning. So as you can see, a ton of built-in synergy. The mana base, we've got one mountain, one forest, and then a ton of dual lands, four blood crypts, four dragon skull summits, four overgrown tombs, we've got two woodland cemeteries, four rootbound crags, and then the full playset of stomping ground as well, plenty of forests for Nyssa. And then delving into the sideboard, got the full playset of duress against combo and control decks, more copies of legions and against zombies, hydroid crisis and adanto vanguards, then two copies of noxious grasp to destroy a creature or planeswalker that's green or white, so can destroy poisoning to fairies, can take out dinosaurs from the john dinosaur deck, We've got two copies of the Elder Spell against opposing Planeswalkers, and we've got plenty of Planeswalkers ourselves, so those can gain a ton of loyalty as well. Then we have one copy of Fry, which can deal 5 damage to an opposing creature or Planeswalker that's blue or white, and also can be countered. Two copies of Assassin's Trophy as kind of a catch-all, since we can be pretty soft to opposing permanents like uh, enchantments with convert mana cost 4 or greater, like Experimental Frenzy out of the Mono Red deck, so I wanted to have a few extra answers for those in the sideboard. And finally, two copies of Ashok, which prevents the opponent from searching, so great against opposing scapeshift decks, and can also hit graveyard decks like the four-color Kethys deck. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play. And I think we've got a Keeper, Paradise Druid, pretty important here, giving us the third mana. And then we've got basically all the synergies online. I will take two in case we need to shock turn one since I'm kind of locked into playing that Druid on 2. Just a Hallowed Fountain. Let's play our Druids. And then we'll have to decide between Shadra and Mayhem Devil. Temple of Mystery, so likely a Scapeshift deck. So getting this Mayhem Devil out there is pretty nice. I think I'll play Chandra over Devil, since it lines up a bit better against the Fairy. They can, of course, bounce the Paradise Druid now, but then we get to take out the Fairy with Chandra pretty easily. Sorry, I'm late. Drawing a third land would be nice, so we can play the Devil. Pillage instead. Alright. So a bit stuck on lands, but I've got a lot of the tools we need in the matchup. Four mana. And it's gonna be a root, giving the opponent two extra lands. Ooh, they've got a Demir Guild Gate and a Gruul Guild Gate, so they might be on a Golos version of Scapeshift. Did find the land at least. So I think we'll play the devil for now. 
and try and get in some damage. And there's a field of the dead. And a Golos. So... That can search up another land, probably another field of the dead. Make two more zombies. This is where finding a legion's end would be nice. Alright, so... What are our options? I could pirate spillage and... Make two treasures, give us some more mana. And then I could take out Golos by using Chandra, Shock and a treasure. That might be the play. So we'll start with Pillage, discarding of Raska. See what we can find. Alright, Woodland Champion. So how about I... play Woodland Champion. Dealing one damage... to Golos. Then make some elementals to, to grow the champion, and then I can shock Golos as well, deal one to our opponents. And no attacks. And deal two more. Alright, so we're left with a 4-4 champion. Opponents at 10, but uh, two Field of the Dead are definitely problematic. They also gain three from the plaza. So it's pretty important for us to find a Legion's End to clean up these zombie tokens. If they play Hydroid Crisis, we do have an Angrath to deal with it at least. There we go. Alright, so... This is actually pretty nice. Get to use the opponent's crisis against them. You're just fuel for the fire. Your crew for my freedom. <laughs> Make some more elementals. Say hi to my fiery friends. Don't know if the woodland champion can really attack since they can just triple block it. So I'll just send in the crisis by itself. A bunch more damage. So Mayhem Devil's doing work, Frasca can also sacrifice something, but her opponent's got a ton of cards in hand, so... Could still easily lose here. Thank me later. The Fairy Bouncing Devil. And they can take out one of our Planeswalkers, if not both. Alright, we can protect Chandra, which I think is pretty important here. There's no way we can save Angrath. So... I think I want to keep Chandra at uh, maximum loyalty. If I don't block with Paradise Root, I can go Vraska plus Mayhem Devil in the same turn next turn, which is maybe important, and I guess Chandra at 2 loyalty is still fine. So we'll block like this. So pretty interesting game so far. Another plaza puts them up to nine. So that's probably gonna get them out of range of anything significant. Angras Rampage. Can kill the fairy, I suppose. Not too useful. So definitely playing the devil. And then we'll make some more elementals with Chandra. I could use Vraska to kill a zombie, but her opponent could also easily have like a growth spiral in hand to make more zombies. So I don't think we're going to be able to attack them on the ground. It's even questionable to send in the Woodland Champion, although even if they make two more zombies, I guess it would still be a trade at least. So... Let's play Vraska for now. Your life's about to end. 
So if I'm afraid of a growth spiral making two zombies, I could destroy one of them so the champion can still attack and then they just have to chump with one token. Don't know if that's the way to go. I think I would rather keep this back to protect our planeswalkers. So I'll just plus second elemental. And now the question is, do I go after Teferi or just go face? I think I'm supposed to just go face. Since unless I draw Legion's End, I'm not going to be able to get past all the zombies here. There's a growth spiral, so they get to make some more zombies. And even a second growth spiral, so attacking with the champion would not have worked out great. But yeah, our opponent's pretty far ahead now with all these uh, zombies from Field of the Dead. Might just be dead right now if they have the right cards. Don't worry, I got this. I guess if our plan was to top deck a Legion's and to clear the zombies, I should have killed the fairy because now they can still play any ramp spell at instant speed. Like if they have another route, for example, they can still make zombies at instant speed to block our creatures. Whereas if I had killed the fairy and I top deck a Legion's end, I can clear all the zombies. And unless they've got a grow spiral. I could uh, potentially attack for lethal. It's gonna be a small 6-6 six, six Hydroid Crisis. Maybe playing around another Angrath here. Or they just have another route they want to cast it in some speed. Where do the zombies go? A bunch of zombies at Vraska. And a bunch at Chandra. So we can't really save any of our planeswalkers here. So it doesn't matter which ones we block. I guess I should have blocked the one zombie that was attacking my face to save myself two damage. I uh, don't think it's gonna matter. Picked up a Nissa. So... Yeah, I think it's too little too late here. Alright, GG's. Let's go on to sideboarding. So we do get to pick up some useful tools in the matchup. Definitely want the two Ashioks. Opponent might not actually play the card Scapeshift, but they still have plenty of search effects. Uh, trophy can take out Field of the Dead, so that's definitely a consideration. Uh, I do like a couple duresses to take out some of the Planeswalkers and Ram spells, and definitely want the two Legion's Ends for Krasis and the Zombie Tokens. And then definitely can take out the Shocks since there's no creatures we need to kill. The Woodland Champions usually get outclassed pretty quickly by Zombie Tokens like we saw in that game, so can easily cut those as well. And rely on the Planeswalkers and Mayhem Devils to get there. Angra's Rampage could still be serviceable. The Pillage we could shave if we want to. Fry, not too useful. Can maybe take out a Krasis if it's not too large. Noxious Grasp is probably better in this matchup as it can kill Krasis and Teferi, no matter the size of the Hydroid. But they don't kill Golos, so I think I like the Rampage since it can uh, also make the opponent sacrifice an artifact. So if they have a bunch of zombies and a Golos, we can still make sure to kill Golos. So I think we'll try this. Keep the Pillages for a bit of ramp and for a bit of car selection. We'll be on the play. And this hand has a bit of an awkward uh, mana situation going. No reds with uh, a Chandra in hand. Don't think I can keep... Even though the pillage would be nice to ramp into Liliana if we found some red sources here. It's a bit too sketchy. Alright, this is much better. So do I keep the Rampage? It is nice to have in the graveyard as well if we play Chandra next. But I kind of want to keep the Pillage to ramp me into a turn 5 Liliana. So I either ditch Chandra or the Rampage here. And I'm guessing Chandra is going to be more useful in general. So we'll try this. Do need to make sure we hit land 4 so we can cast the Pillage in the first place. 
looks like our opponent might have a growth spiral. Alright, there's land 4, so that's good. And there's Field of the Dead. There's the ferry. Pluses. And we're pillaging. Discarding. Could discard land, could discard Vraska. Vraska can also kill the ferry if I wanted to do that instead. But my guess is that ramping into Liliana is the way we win this game. So I'm gonna pillage instead. And then can ignore the ferry for now. I guess just attack it with the elemental tokens from Chandra. And I guess I'll discard land, since we're probably going to draw into more lands anyway. Alright, land Legion Sands, two good draws. Alright, so we've got a lot of the tools we need here. The Legion Sands. Teferi's actually going to bounce a token. We can sack it in response, so our opponent doesn't get to draw a card. Probably should have floated a different color here. Don't think it's gonna matter. And a backup to ferry. All right. Are they gonna minus again? Prevent us from casting Liliana. <laughs> this time they've uh, changed their mind here. They're just gonna minus without actually targeting anything, so we can't deny them the draw step. Fair enough. Assassin's trophy. So. Yeah, let's hope this Liliana resolves. Of course, plays great with uh, Chandra in play. I am the master here. Make a zombie, make some elementals. Effective. Elementals can go after Teferi. Any reason to send both? Probably not. And then when the elementals get sacrificed, we'll get to draw two cards. Opponent also has two islands in play and now two Field of the Dead, so they're still pretty far away from actually making zombie tokens. And the rest, good pickup. So things are going pretty well, despite the mulligan. All right, roots, so now they're probably gonna get to make some zombies. But I do have Assassin's Trophy. I can Trophy and then minus Chandra to Trophy again. They already have two of their basics in play, so they might not have too many left in their deck. And then the Legion's End can clean up the zombie tokens. So drawing a land would be pretty good here. And there we go. So, step one. Assassin's Trophy. Field of the Dead. Opponent gets a zombie. Minus. Trophy field of the dead again. Remember this one? And now we get to Legion's and all the zombies. And make a zombie with Liliana. Opponent's got two time wipes in hand and a Plaza of Harmony. So that should be beatable. Golos was a pretty good draw. Although we can use Liliana to get rid of it. Gets another Field of the Dead. So we might have to uh, cash in this Chandra. And the uh, trophy sadly got exiled after using it with Chandra. So we don't have another answer for the Field of the Dead lined up. Although Mayhem Devil wasn't bad. Time Wipe also pretty good combo with Golos. So I think I'm gonna just minus here. Get rid of the zombies. Fight fire with fire. And then probably play Mayhem Devil. 
minus. Deal a bunch of damage. Draw some cards. And I guess I'll take one of the time wipes here. Alright, so we're still in okay shape. But they've got some scary top decks, put on the sides to pack them up. Alright, so our sideboard plan seemed to work quite well there, with uh, access to more legions and the resses. Our opponent with multiple time wipes. Time wipes actually not all that incredible against us, since we don't play a ton of creatures, we're mostly planeswalker based. Any changes? I think we're still good to go here. The trophy is also doing a ton of work in that game. Alright, on the draw, got an Angras Rampage as our early interaction. Hmm, this hand's pretty slow. I mean, it can be powerful, we've got the combination of Banefire with Nyssa and a couple forests, but we're not really doing a whole lot in the early turns. No Chandras, no Mayhem Devils, no Paradise Roots for Ramp. So I think despite looking okay, it's not gonna cut it in this matchup. Alright, this is a little bit better. I've got a plan with the Pirate Spillage, ramping into Liliana once again. And then the Mayhem Devil's okay. So, what do I put on the bottom? Probably just a Nyssa. And then the plan is Spillage into Liliana instead. Another Devil. And no green mana yet for the opponent. We still don't actually know for sure if the opponent has Cape Shift in their deck. They probably don't. Most of the goals decks uh, don't need the Cape Shift. The fairy bounces Devil. So I think I'm still just uh, pillaging here. And then probably discard the Blood Crypts. Alright, that's all the Devils. Also play well with the Treasure Tokens. Trust me, I have a plan. Poon says go. They can play their Ramp spell at instant speed. So what to do, what to do. I could play a Mayhem Devil and then play a second Pirate Spillage. Sacking two treasures to kill Teferi. Making two more treasures. Could just slam down a Liliana, sinking a treasure, making a zombie, which would also be reasonable. Don't know if the opponent maybe brought in Dovin's Vetoes. Could play double Mayhem Devil, and that could be bad if they have a time wipe. I think I'm just playing one Liliana here. I hope they don't have a Dovin's Veto. Alright, that's too bad. Veto would have also been pretty good against our Pillage. But now at least they didn't get to cast a ramp spell. I'll protect you. Nice, right, so she's gonna be a Golos. So I can Liliana minus to get rid of it. Which is not perfect since we don't get to draw any cards from Liliana. But uh Still a reasonable answer here. This isn't your average zombie horse. I do love a good death whale. We've got a Legion's End, so that's a good answer for a bunch of zombie tokens. Rejuvenator finds a land, which will make the first zombie token of this game. And we kind of just want to get these Mayhem Devils out there. Hopefully alongside a Chandra at some point. The Fairy's gonna plus. Might be a bad idea. And a Narset as well. That's unexpected. Narset is quite good against uh, our Liliana. 
and drawing us extra cards. Angra's Rampage, an interesting addition to. Only have five mana to work with this turn. So I could Rampage, make them sacrifice a Planeswalker, and then play a Mayhem Devil. Seems like the play. I guess play the Devil first, so we get to deal one damage. And one damage to Rejuvenator, or one damage to Narsets. Interesting decision if they have like a time wipe, but he gets value by picking up the Rejuvenator again. I think I'll kill it for now. Rise and shine. Narset minuses. Second field of the dead and a Golos. Yeah, that's rough. Finds the third field of the dead. And a grow spiral. So can't really cast a pirate spillage with Narset still in play, as we won't get to draw any cards. So I guess for now I just got a Legions and the Zombies, so I don't get overwhelmed, or I could just wait a turn, play two Mayhem Devils, and uh, take it from there. Don't think I can let them keep all the zombies here. So probably got a legion's end. And then I'm just gonna play another devil. And make a zombie. Smelly, but effective. Opponent with a Veil of Summer, Devout Decree and Drawn from Dreams in hand here. Narset minuses. Finds another Teferi. So they can just decree the Liliana if they want to. Teferi can bounce a zombie. No, I am not making this up as I go. Ashok the draw. So I could pillage, discarding the devil, not drawing any cards just to make two treasures, which can then help us take out the planeswalkers. But that feels pretty bad. So I might just attack Narset with everyone, so I can cast a pillage and try and draw into more answers. If they have a grow spiral, I'm pretty dead, not beating that. Could send the other one at the ferry, and then... If they want to save the fairy, I lose a zombie instead of a Mayhem Devil. Since Narset's the one we care about the most here. Alright, we'll try this. Oh no, they have a Gross Spiral. That's bad. Oof, luckily they didn't have a land in hand. Alright, let's uh, pillage here. Discard Ashok, which doesn't seem too useful anymore. Pick up some lands. Play another Devil. And now each treasure I sacrifice is 3 damage, which can help me take out Golos. Point cast Veil of Summer. It's probably too late for that. Kill this Golos in response. And I think I'll kill the fairy too here just to be safe. Even though I could potentially take out a zombie token if I wait. But uh, the fairy plusing is pretty scary. Alright, so. That went better than I could have hoped for, but there's a lot of scary cards our opponent can cast here. A time wipe would put us back in the Stone Ages, and we don't have much going on in hand, so I really just need to top deck well from here. Root is gonna make six zombie tokens. So 
So, you know, the Ashok would have still been somewhat useful. It was a tough decision what to discard otherwise. Vraska's a great pickup. Play her. Sacrifice a lance. Sacrifice a crank, since the actual forests are useful with Nyssa. Three damage. I guess we'll start taking out some zombies. Could also go face, hoping to just top deck a Legion's end, but for now, I want to protect my Vraska. I guess I'll play out my lands. No attacks. Another decree for Vraska. So, pretty good sideboard cards here from our opponent as well. Keeps a card on top and Deputy to get rid of all the devils. Feels bad. And a goal also. so they kind of have it all here. Yeah, well, we definitely put up a fight, but I think this is kind of where things get out of hand with four Field of the Deads in play. It's a bit too much to fight through. If we really wanted to have even more hate for the matchup, I guess something like Alpine Moon or even um, Blood Sun could come in handy. Although it's not like they don't have answers for those between Deputy, Teferi. So it's not like uh, resolving one of those cards wins us the game. All right, good game's opponents. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. And... All right, the sand has potential if we hit some land drops. Pillage plays well with Devil and Champion. And if we draw Chandra and a Red Source, the sand could do some powerful things. I'll try it. Let's see what we're up against. Turn one Dismal Backwater, so it could be a blue-black control deck, could be... Some sort of uh, Sultai Field of the Dead deck. Just gonna be a swamp for now. And a Thought Erasure takes one of the Devils. Paradise Druid to pick up. Could be okay at letting us cast the Pillage next turn, although it lines up pretty awkwardly against a Cry of the Carnarium, which your opponent can easily have. So I think I'm leaning Mayhem Devil for now. And then we can discard the Druid to the Pillage. Now it's gonna be a Temple of Malady, so it does look like a Sultai deck of some variety. Alright, did find a land, so that's good. Pillage, discard druids. Attack for seven. And we've got two more damage stored up here in our treasure tokens. Rejuvenator is acceptable. And then Chandra is a nice follow-up to Champion and Devil, so we're definitely doing it. So what's my sequence here? I think I like Sacrifice Treasure to kill Rejuvenator. Chandra make two tokens. Sack with everyone. And then just end of turn, two damage should seal the deal. Alright, so that was a pretty explosive start on our side. Turn two champion, turn three devil, turn four pillage, turn five Chandra win the game. So against a Sultai, sort of uh, Field of the Dead, Elemental Ramp deck, I guess you can call it. How do we want to sideboard? So they don't necessarily have the scapeshift, much like the Golos opponents. 
Legion's end for the zombie token seems pretty important. Uh, Shock is definitely a card we can cut again. No targets that really need uh, killing other than maybe a Risen Reef, which we can also kill with all the one damage effects we have. Uh, Noxious Grasp can kill the Green Cavalier, which I expect my opponent to have. So don't mind a couple of those. Couple of the Duresses, don't want to go overboard, but two seem okay since they're probably going to have a decent amount of creatures as well if they have the elemental package. Trophy is also consideration, and then of course Ashok we might want to make room for as well. I'm probably going to want all the copies of Legion's End, so we'll cut the Rampage for it. And then usually I cut the champions against the Scapeshift decks. Maybe I should keep them in. I think I'm cutting all the champions, make room for trophies and Ashok. Alright, hand seems okay. Turn two Druids, turn three Vraska. We've got Chandra to go with the Devil. So that's the Keeper. Had to turn off the sound effects for a second here since there's a few sound going off in the background that doesn't stop. Just play a Blood Crypt for now. And play our turn two Druids. Let me check if the sound bug is gone. Nope, still going strong. Thought Erasure. Might grab the Mayhem Devil here, could grab Vraska. And looks like we actually didn't submit our sideboards since we still have the Angras Rampage. So we might have timed out of uh, sideboarding, which is pretty unfortunate since pretty sure I submitted before the timer ran out. Oh well, play one of our three Chandras here. Ah, won't lie, I'm a pretty great pirate. Hey, these little guys are great. So we're not gonna have access to all four Legion's ends for the zombie tokens. Not gonna have access to Ashiok. Arboreal Grazer. To slow us down a little bit. And the Legion Sand on Paradise Roots, fair enough. Luckily picked up the land, so we can still play Vraska. And I think I do want to draw with the Vraska here. Try and dig towards our answers. Say hi to my fiery friends. Sacrifice one of the elemental tokens. Weakness, leaving the body. Right, Pirate Spillage can discard one of our Chandras. And what are we looking for? Legion's End, Mayhem Devil. So they're pretty close to making zombie tokens. Pick up another Vraska. I think I'll start with Pillage discarding Chandra. Alright, Mayhem Devil. I think I want to save that for next turn, or I could play it out right now to make use of the Elementals dying. I guess that's fair. I'm wasting the treasures, quote-unquote, but... I'm making use of the Elementals. Get to attack. And sacrifice for a card. Except me. Let's see if the fuse is still going here. Yep. Alright, Rejuvenator is probably going to find the seventh land to make two zombie tokens here. Do have the Mayhem Devil to kind of manage the zombie tokens, but once they start finding more ramp spells, we could be in trouble. Gets a Field of Ruin. 
We're getting close to ultimating Vraska as well, so that's going to be exciting. So I think that's our plan here. Try and uh, protect Vraska as much as we can. So I can make two tokens with Chandra. Go get em, buddies. And draw with Vraska. The ends justify the means. Killing Rejuvenator. Can play a Nissa. Witness the ties that bind us all. And tap summits. The land shall conquer you. Rampage to make them sacrifice a creature. Deal one to the zombie. No attacks. Sacrifice token, kill other zombie. Alright, so next turn we can ultimate Vraska and make some hasty elementals with Chandra to help us close out the game, hopefully. Ooh, but there's Yarok. And I can Field of Ruin, which will make four zombie tokens now. So we might have difficulty getting through for damage. So we'll need to top deck Allegiance Ends. And I can Field of Ruin again as well here, so that's uh, four more zombies. Do get to deal one damage with the Mayhem Devil, but it doesn't matter. So it's pretty much Legions and or Bust at this point. Yeah, Yarok was a good top deck. Although, to be honest, had they just played a land and activated Field of Ruin, they would have been able to make four zombies. So they would have had five creatures in play. But with the two tokens from Chandra, the one land from Nyssa, and then Vraska, number two killing a creature, we would have been able to get through for lethal thanks to the emblem. Woodland champion to draw, still in the deck since we didn't sideboard it out properly. Yeah, we're in trouble, just gotta buy time until we can find a legions and I guess. I can make an emblem, play a second Vraska and try and dig deeper. One more scratch and you'll die in agony. So I'll play champion. Make some tokens. Oh, so cute. Play second Vraska. <laughs> Plus sacking a token. Sacrifices must be made. And yeah, just gotta play defense here, I think. Opponent can never feel too safe to attack us, since if they don't have any creatures on defense, the emblem could kill them out of nowhere. And yeah, if we had sideboarded properly, this woodland champion probably would have been a legion sense, but well, opponent just uh, packs them up. So I guess I didn't see themselves winning the game with the Vrask emblem in play, but uh, yeah, despite not submitting our sideboard, we still got there, so that's nice. Let's see if I can turn on the sound effects again. <laughs> nope, <laughs> the fuse is still going. Well, on that note, I'm gonna leave you here. I want to thank you so much for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.